with what is full stack development what are the key skills needed to be a full stack developer should you be one and a guided route and what are the company's expectations and a lot more and this is a one stop tech chat for all your questions with me is mr arun prakash who is the ceo and founder of kobi let's start the tech chat in 3 2 1 let's go hi sir i'm good how are you i'm i'm great Okay, so here's my first question to you. Like you have been in this field so many years, you've been seventeen years in this field. How do you feel being in this position, being a CEO of a company? Uh, actually, I enjoy being a developer than being a CEO. So recent years, I'm because of the need, I have to be a CEO, or else like a, my best feeling is always with uh, either being a developer or being a mentor. Okay. So that is a time where I enjoy the most. Okay. Do you still code? Yes, I still code. I uh, not in the daytime because daytime I have other meetings to do it. So in the night or in the weekends I do it, and I also always interact with the developers to uh, do things, get things done. Great. So does that help you while doing your management, like being a developer that you are, other developers that you understand who are working in your company? Ah uh, yes, uh, it helps in uh, most of the ways, but also it hinders. So the way it helps is like for example, if there is some problem or the use case that comes from the Uh, uh external business scenario I, i i would be able to judge and then answer it pretty quickly this is doable this is not doable uh this is the advantage which i get it but the disadvantage is like uh, as a developer i uh, i always have a mind block i don't sell okay for uh, as a business person first you have to uh, sell and then do things but as a developer mind it's, it's much more practical uh, and the practicality hinders your uh, thought process in sometimes that's the two sides of the coin okay So let's get into what is full stack development. Like someone who is a normal person, he wants to understand what is full stack development. Okay, uh, full stack development is a new jargon. So in IT industry, once in a while we create jargons. That's how we uh, uh, get more salaries or more hikes. Right. Okay, uh, the same uh, programming language will get upgraded, and the new version you will charge more to the clients or the. So what was the name before? Uh, before it was web development. Okay. So if you are uh, in your school days, you might have learned HTML, CSS, right? Right. So that is what the full stack development is. Uh, but uh, it's not just only the technology. Uh, in full stack, it is much more towards the responsibility than the actual uh, technical parts towards it. Uh, in uh, in web development, typically you stop at the front end itself. You don't go to the back end of the site, or you don't worry too much about it. In full stack development, it is like a, uh, you act like a CEO. You are responsible for everything, so you should know what works in the front, what works, what happens at the back end, and if it doesn't work, you can't blame someone else. So it's your responsibility. That that's the uh, full stack development. Right. So you said front end, back end. So what is front end and what is back end? Okay. So it is straightforward as the English word says. Front end is anything which you see in the front. Okay. Ah, uh, it could be a mobile app. it could be a web app or it could be any kiosk okay so anywhere which you see whatever you see in the front or which you interact that is a front end okay if it is a, a mobile app it will be like a android app or ios app or it could be a hybrid app depending upon where you use it or if it is a website it should be either html css those kind of things along with some frameworks this is a front end part of it and the back end is the place where you have all your business logic for example if you are having a booking uh, a cab booking or a, let's say a course learning thing okay so how much course you have completed so when you complete what is the points you get it so how much you uh, get a discount okay or what is the scores you get it when you complete something so all this logic resides in the back end okay back end is something which sits in the server side which most of the times the user is not aware of it he always knows the result he doesn't worry about how the calculation is done so that is a back end part of it in the back end there are two parts in that one is the logic part another one is the data storage part which is the database okay so that is a, uh, the back end has two uh, segments front end has one segment which is the visual segment of it so now you said these are two jobs basically then yep right now in some cases it's three jobs okay. for example the front end uh, It, it's even more than three as well. So at the higher level, front end, back end, and a database administrator. This is one level. Okay. So that is that happening like all the levels, like startups and big companies. All the levels, three jobs. Uh, no. Uh, if you go uh, to bigger companies, for example, in PayPal, uh, so you have 
at every level you have different different teams to do it for example for design alone des- creating a visual design alone there is a team okay from the visual design to converting that to html document uh, there is a team from html html to a component front end deployment there is a team okay from front end uh, business logic there is a team for development pushing the code to the live there is a team okay for database there is a separate team for database tuning and other things or managing it there is a separate team like that so if you uh, look at the bigger companies all the uh, parts are split into multiple teams and then given it but when you come to a startup for example in guvi so uh, there is one guy who takes care of everything okay one whole flow he has to take care of it okay it's not like a two or two three different teams it's one guy if you say that this is a problem you have to solve it he'll take care of it okay like that if it is a recruitment platform hire so there is one person who is taking care of it probably there might be couple of developers along with them so max 3 or 4 people small uh, if it is a guvi platform there is one or two team okay if it is zen platform there is one or two team two person team like that it goes on so they take care of the end to end responsibility so that is that is the uh, important thing in full stack development uh, in a bigger companies you don't need to worry about the full stack actually uh, but in a smaller com- uh, startups it is expected by default so the course differs like your knowledge in a different companies differ exactly depending upon the size of the company it differs like a- so you so we'll come to that further later so basically different projects also might differ like what yes. pro- for every company it might differ yes it will differ for example some companies might take some set of frameworks and they expect you to be good at it uh in some companies the same uh, in the front end you have different frameworks in back end for example different languages they'll expect some companies are into microsoft stack they'll expect you to be strong in asp.net mm-hmm. some are in java stack some are in open source stack they might expect node or golang or something like that so depending upon the company and the problem statement it might differ okay so as these are different streams right in in one developer itself there are different streams so obviously there are different skill set so if, if i want to join what are the skill set required for me for a front end for a back end and how should i decide that i am fit for this and i am fit for that so uh, let's assume so this is like uh, this to i mean uh, there is one joke where uh, uh, school student was saying like uh, if you have different teachers for different subjects why you are asking everything yeah. me to learn it's same as here as well uh, if you are a beginner probably don't try to do everything okay don't try to be a full stack developer full stack knowledge is good but you can't be a full stack developer in day one or when i say day one in three months okay so in that case you can focus only on the front end or back end any one of the side so which one would you prefer first front end or first back end for me uh, it's a personal choice for me it is always back end because uh, if you want to go to front end you should have little bit aesthetic sense which i don't have okay so the design or the look and feel or the patience to do it i don't have it but i am pretty good in logical okay in back end you do, all you need is logic okay and uh, fight related to that so that way i prefer back end for me but if you have that uh, interest towards the ui okay you can go with the front end as well it uh, there is no much difference uh, in terms of uh, skill set but in terms of interest it differs okay for a beginner i would suggest to go with the front end itself okay because it's pretty simple to start with okay start with html css nowadays html css school students are learning so that should be straight forward and then little bit on framework so you have to either learn react or angular whatever framework you learn it so that will help you to uh, become a uh, uh, not become a developer that will help you to get your first job okay, okay? then after getting into a job you can decide where, which path you want to get in we'll get more detailed into how to select and all but uh, how do i choose like i'm a i want to go into tech but i don't know should i go for front end or back end like i don't want to do i don't want to do full stack yes. i want to choose any one of them how do i decide start if you are a fresher start with front end uh, uh let's assume if you are not even uh, ready for the front end start with data science okay there you learn python and you can go in a different path so like for a first timers i would suggest these two items when it comes uh, when it comes to development activity front end or data science start with there if you know little bit of programming start with back end and uh, you don't have that aesthetic sense start with back end okay and let's assume i am from a computer science background i know here and there little bit 
ఓకే దెన్ అటాక్ ఫుల్ స్టాక్ డెవలప్మెంట్ లర్న్ డేటా స్ట్రక్చర్స్ లిటిల్ బిట్ సో దట్ యూ కెన్ గెట్ అయర్ ప్యాకేజ్ ఓకే సో బీయింగ్ కంప్యూటర్ సైన్స్ బ్యాక్గ్రౌండ్ హెల్ప్స్ ఎస్ ఇట్ హెల్ప్స్ అండ్ బీయింగ్ నాన్ టెక్ బ్యాక్గ్రౌండ్ లైక్ ఇస్ దేర్ ఎనీ ప్రాబ్లమ్ వెన్ no it it's much more towards the uh, mind block for example uh, when i go to uh, college or when i meet the first year grads or second year grads ask the question what is the biggest challenge that you face in programming okay they'll start with the error handling they'll start with logical thinking all those things but finally it all ends up with like a one common answer like i am from biology group or i am from biology background so that stops you from trying and learning other things right the same problem extends with this as well okay so you might be from a non computer science background so don't carry that baggage for computer science you don't need to be a superstar all you need is a basic logical thing and lot of perseverance is needed because you need to do lot of trial and error okay so that way uh, anybody can get into computer science okay uh, if you have the perseverance okay now many people do career switching switching also like 35 plus or even from the age perspective and also from the career perspective is it easy uh it will be easier uh, if you are in like a, if you have some work experience and took a break and then coming back okay let's say uh, this is much more uh, this answer is much more suitable for women who goes for the maternity break or some break because of their marriage or something and then they want to come back uh this is pretty easy for them because they can learn and their past experience will help them to manage a team or lead a team technically okay that way it is much more easier let's say you are completely from uh, non uh, tech background okay i wouldn't suggest much okay uh, because uh, your baggage would be little harder okay if you don't have the baggage yes you are good enough but most of the cases i have seen people with baggage so that way like uh, if you have like around 5 to 7 years is okay okay beyond that it will be a little harder okay okay so now going into just front end like someone wants to become a front end developer what's the fundamental languages that he should learn uh javascript is the language and little bit on uh, html css uh, basics and uh, frameworks related to it for example uh bootstrap or lot of frameworks are there when i say bootstrap it is one of the example so you can start with it and javascript absolutely must so there is no question for the front end so for the language because no. i've heard like people do one language because they are not doing guided uh, one uh. when they're doing voluntarily they don't know how many months to learn that okay. so can you tell us the duration and how much percentage like html you should do 50 or something like that how many months you should give for each language okay so your uh, your point is very valid uh, there is something called tutorial hell okay if you google it it will tell you the path for next 2 years okay and you will say that you will be decent programmer after 12 years 12 months even then they'll they'll not say that you will be a good programmer but to get a job it doesn't matter okay to get a job you have to you should have the ability to solve a problem to solve a problem two parts are there one is you need to understand the language which is the syntax part of it and the second part is the little bit of logical approach towards something for example let's say if you go to a supermarket and if you order something uh, you should know uh, let's say it is 10 items are there you should know you should use a loop to add the things you should start with one so this basic attachment of application with the code i said loop right loop is much more to programming and this is a practical sense uh, list of items so the list to the loop attachment you need probably 2 uh, to 3 weeks of time okay so if you go to code kata so you have lot of problems started starts from input output then it goes to the basic math so basic math could be like uh, calculate your simple interest or uh, average of numbers or even let's say if you are uh, going for a cab booking so it's much starting point ending point math. that kind of basic number calculation you needed so if you see most of the application which is happening in the real world is not complicated so all ends up in three activities maths array and then little bit on strings okay mas okay if you know math you can solve basic uh, equations when i say equation programmatically like a uh, minus addition subtraction average all those kind of it i'm not talking about algebraic equations or a trigonometry so basic math is good enough second one is strings strings is needed for your printing your names okay 
are doing something display all those kind of things so let's say uh, if it is india you have to use rupees if it is uh, us you have to use dollars so you have to do the mapping for this so string mapping these kind of basic mapping you needed and then arrays arrays is nothing but a list of items okay so most of the times when you go like a, if it is a class also if it is a shopping cart or if you have a let's say a cab booking app you have a list of cabs you have to pick it from that all these things are list okay that is arrays if you learn these three items you will be able to be a decent programmer to get a job so for this you can spend 3 weeks so one per week okay so if you do that you will learn you can use you can learn in any language it could be javascript it could be python or it could be any language 3 weeks for le- learning the logic okay and then little bit on html css in a week you can learn it and then you can go the uh, frameworks the first month is for basics second month is for frameworks okay uh, second month first half is for framework and the first two weeks is for framework and the next two weeks you can build something out of what you learned in one and a half months okay so you learned a framework you learned a html try to replicate that how to be responsive okay to prove what exactly so ultimately in two months you should you will be able to uh, uh, re- you will be able to ready to build a portfolio okay two months front end portfolio you should be able to do it basic front end portfolio so you said basics right so what can we do that extra to get a you know major in your basics like there are fundamentals everybody is learning that Correct. how to have an upper hand while studying your basics okay so what's the extra? exactly so after this uh, you can learn react or angular this is only for front end i'm saying so if you are able to uh, grasp any one of this frameworks or view js a uh, lot of next js any any one of the frameworks pick any one and uh, master that it takes a month to master it uh, to master the uh, first level of things okay uh, so if you do that you will be able to become a front end developer in 3 months decent front end developer this is assuming you don't know anything at the start of the month now the 3 months is including projects or excluding ah uh, including projects okay. so for example the react when i said it react so first 2 months is for basic ui building third month is for react in react 2 weeks or 3 weeks you build uh, you learn it while learning you will be able to build some basic components and then in the third week what you have to do is you have to revamp the project which you did in the first mu- uh, second month in react okay first uh, at the end of the second month you have done some project right that would be in plain vanilla html css so now convert that into a component in the third month okay so that way you can build your portfolio okay so when you said framework choose any one so we said this earlier also that every company differs yeah. right so which how many framework should i choose and for which according to which company like people go for startups so people go for big companies which framework should i choose and how many so pick one don't pick too many one is good enough so either angular or react that is your convenient so uh, i mean uh, there is no hard and fast rule because lot of companies use still uh, both are in the equal uh, balanced but react has little bit extra towards it so nowadays most of the companies ask for react as well so i would suggest react but i'm not recommending 100 percentage uh, you can also start with angular okay these two are the popular stuff in the market then the next set is view js and next js you can start with any one of these two items so out of these four pick one the which one is always your choice